I have a collet that I need to make for a releasing tap holder. This is an image of that collet. Going to be modeling up in Kanban. Uh, modeling is probably not the right term. So if anyone's offended by that, sorry. I'm going to be drawing it up in Kanban. So the first thing I need to do is draw my shape elements. We're going to start with this square shape. So click on the draw rectangle icon. Just throw me one in there. Hit escape to stop that function. Go down here to the size. The height of that square is 0.735. The width is also 0.735, and I want it to be centered on the origin, so the x-coordinate will be negative 0.3675, and the y-coordinate also negative 3675. And there's our square. These corners here need to be rounded off. So I'm going to put a circle. I have this on snap to grid. So when I get close to the origin, it automatically snaps. That's convenient. I know that the dimension of that circle is 0 0.928. 928. The next dimension is this circle. So we're going to draw another circle. That one is 0.995. Then we have this circle underneath here. On this part it is 0 0.5 let's see where did I write that? 0 0.5313 0 0.5313 okay. We have another circle for this part right here. That dimension is 1.08. And one more circle for this outer edge. There's a slight taper here, making this outer edge bigger than that edge. So that diameter is 1.18. So if we hold the ALT key, left click, oh well, let's get rid of that first. Hold the ALT key, left click, we can rotate our uh, layout here. So now let's put some dimensions on these. Now what I like to do, this isn't an overly complex shape, but it's not simple either. I like to, well let me just show you what I like to do. I'm going to put a profile on here. I'm going to leave the depth increment as is. I know that this has to be point, negative point 0.335 and I'm going to leave the tool diameter at zero. And there we go. Now we can see the portion that's supposed to represent this. I'm going to leave the, I'm not going to draw the corner um, the circle that knocks those corners off just yet. And I'll show you why later. So the next thing we want to draw is a profile on this. Now we know our stock surface is negative 0.335 because that's where this one ends. The target depth on this one well I didn't write how thick that was. So let me see. Okay. It's 0 0.2. 0 0.5. Negative 0.535. And now we have that portion. So for the next portion, I'm going to profile that as well. Stock surface will be negative 
target depth will be negative 0.85 generate our tool path this circle here will be our next profile stock surface will be negative 0.85 target depth negative 1.08 Sorry, 1.05. And our last circle. Stock surface, negative 1.05. To a target depth of negative 1.15. Now, as you can see, it looks pretty much like that with the exception of the angle. So let's go ahead and put that angle in. We'll go down here to side profile. I'm going to do a slope 14 degrees. Ah, look at that. So, now we can look at that and see that it pretty much matches, at least visually, what we have there. If I had put in all the tool diameters, all of these lines would have been further out, and it would be hard to tell if I had the image right or not. So now that we've got it right, we can round these corners off. Copy, paste format, there we go. And that's why I left it off, because if I did that at first, it would have been harder to see. So now's a good time to save. Okay. So let's put some real values to these profiles. I'm going to do 0 0.06 as my depth of cut, 12 as my feed. This is going to be a roughing pass, 2854. I'm going to put a roughing clearance, 0 0.04. Tool diameter for me, 0 0.375. And also tool number one for me. So we can see that changed it visually on the screen quite a deal um, so I wouldn't have been able to look at that and tell if it looked like that hold tight okay sorry about that so uh, that's why I didn't that's why I did it without my tool parameters or tool size or any of that in because I wanted to see the image for what it was before I started to apply those um, before I started to apply that to it. So this is going to be our roughing pass for the top square. I'm going to copy, paste. The only thing I'm going to change here, I'm going to get rid of my roughing clearance. I'm going to change that to a finish RPM. I'm going to change my depth increment to a full depth of cut. And there's our finish pass right there. So we're going to move that up. Uh, let's see, now this circle here, not that one. Oh, I already moved it. Okay. This is going to be uh, to knock off the corners, and that can be a finish pass as well. So we can just copy this one, paste the format, and there we go. Since all we're doing is knocking off these tiny corners, finish pass is acceptable. So next is, actually we're going to hide. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> it may help if I hit the right button. We're going to hide those. We're going to do the same thing here. 0 0.06 is our depth of cut. 
2854, 2375, also tool number one. We're also going to do a roughing pass on that, 0.04. So we're going to copy, paste. And this will be our finish pass. 4200. So I did something wrong. Oh no, I didn't. No, yes, I did. It's got a roughing clearance of zero. And this one. Oh, that's why. <laughs> I never regenerated the toolpath. Okay. Um, while I'm at it, I can grab all of these. Actually, let me uh, enable those again. We'll grab all of those. And we want to do a lead in. Tangent lead in. 0.06 is fine for this. Now we got a little lead in on the cut. So we can hide all them again because those are done. We're going to do this one last. So we'll just leave that. And we're going to do that one next to last. Alright, so this one here. Tool diameter. Zero four for our roughing clearance. Would have been easier to grab all of these at the same time and make these changes, but I did not. Did I change that feed rate? I did. Okay. I'm going to copy this one, paste it here. Change the depth of cut, which reminds me, I did not change this one to 0.06. Depth of cut 1.15. This is our finished pass, 4200. Roughing clearance of zero. And let's grab both of these and do a tangent lead in. 0.06. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to move these up. Uh, actually, I'm going to leave them right here for now. But I will. I'll, I'll be moving something here in a minute, and I'll explain that when I get to it. Okay, this one here, because I am cutting an angle, and I want a pretty fine resolution on that. Gonna go down 0 0.005. There we go. And since I'm taking such a fine cut, I'm gonna speed up the feed rate. Spindle speed can be at a finish pass p speed. 0.375. Also, tool number one. Alright, so what happened here is now we've got an initial pass where it removes stock and then it comes in and does the final pass on the slope. And I'm not sure why it does it. And on a slope this small, <coughs> excuse me, it's probably unnecessary. But when you have a larger slope, it clears out some of that excess material. So I'm not going to fight it, I'm just I'm going to leave it the way it is. Okay, so we've got everything done with the 3 8 inch end mill. This one here, we're going to move down because we're going to use a different tool. Reason is because it's got an undercut. So 
so I don't want to do too many tool changes so I'll save this one for last. The tool diameter on this is 2 tool number 40 for me speed is 3000 want a pretty big lead in because the tool does have to go under here, make the cut, and then come back out without hitting this as it as it uh, lifts up. So we also need a lead out. Same thing, 0.5. Uh, the feed rate is a little different. 15. Okay. There we go. Oh, well, our depth is going to be 0.85. Okay, so go up to view our XY plane. Now, if we show the cut width, we can see that that goes all the way in to the circle that we modeled to represent this. Problem is, that's a pretty hefty cut for a T-slot cutter. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. I hope there's a better way. If somebody knows a better way, please let me know in the comments below. But the way that I've found that it's worked for me is to make several passes. This will be our finished pass. This, I know I can take a roughly an eighth inch depth of cut without cut or without problem. So we're going to do 0 0.12, 0 0.24, 0 0.36. And what that does is that gives us several cuts. This will take a little, a little bit more, a little bit more down to our finished dimension. So instead of taking this whole cut all at once, it's taking it in several passes. Like I said, I'm sure there's a better way. I just don't know what it is. Now the cutter itself isn't tall enough to cut all of this at once. So I have to make two passes. Everything stays the same on these four with the exception of the depth increment. Let me work out that depth real quick. One plus point two two five, which is the height of the cutter, point seven three five. So there we have it. I'll make the pass at two different heights. We enable everything. That's our full file for doing all the cuts on the outer profile. But we have a hole in the center. So let's draw ourselves that hole. Select the circle icon. That diameter is 28. One three, which is nine thirty seconds. Escape to get out of the draw function. We're gonna drill, and I actually need two drill operations. The first one is gonna be point two five. That's gonna be a spot drill or pre-drill. That's tool number two. Twenty five hundred. Plunge rate of, well, plunge rate of six. Need to change this from spiral mill to a can cycle. The depth increment, 0.15, that's the total depth I'm going to go. Let's hide, hide the rest of these. Okay, so 
we paste that format, there's a few things we don't have to change. We could have got away without changing that and just know that we had to do it, but it's good practice to put the information in accurately. Our depth increment, we'll leave that at zero. Target depth, one point negative 1.3 oh, negative 1.3 and we're going to put a peck distance and that's how far down it drills before it retracts and that just helps break the chip so that should be everything so let's double check Got our top square profile, roughing pass, then a finish pass, knocking off the corners, got the round area there with a finish pass, we've got our slope, and then the very bottom with a finish pass, and then we've got all of these cuts to cut the relief, spot drill, through drill, that's everything. So we'll save it. And these can be renamed to help keep track of what you're working on. And let's see, uh, you just double click on that. And you can do that for any of these, even the drills. So let's save that. Generate the tool paths. Produce the G code. That's fine. And that's it. Now we've got a file ready to cut. So if you want to see this being made with this file that I just made in CamBam, I'm going to put a link to the video in the description below. And if anybody knows how to do this better than the way I did it, please let me know in the comments below because I do this often enough that it's troublesome and I would like to find a better way so um, speaking of better ways there's probably a way better way to do this than the way I did it uh, but it works for me and it didn't take that long and um, I've, got, I've had good results so that's it thanks for watching